investigations, did you at any point feel that it was irresponsible of the United States not to provide Benazir Bhutto of the security that she was asking for? She did say in her letter to, Mark's, uh, to Mark Siegel, her uh, friend, that uh, President Musharraf and his minions have made me feel uncomfortable and have made me feel unsafe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know that letter. But uh, the, the issue here is how uh, a uh, sovereign government such as that of Pakistan would accept uh, a, a foreign uh, security to protect a Pakistani national. And that, I think, is it's an, it's an issue that one can understand. So uh, one, one can, cannot truly begin to focus on the responsibility of a foreign government, whichever that government uh, it was, because in the end, it was the Pakistani government that, were, that, that had the responsibility, at the utmost and primary responsibility, to protect the citizens. So uh, I, I think that uh, to, to try to shift, in, in essence, the responsibility, it is, it is I think, missing the, the essence of what a sovereign government should do. So you were talking about responsibility and you also talked about the Pakistan People's Party failing in their leadership. You uh, mentioned many times the black Mercedes which was carrying many PPP leaders including the Interior Minister Rehman Malik. Now the black Mercedes left just before the actual bomb blast took place. Ha- do you see like a possible link between Benazir Bhutto's assassination and the departure of the black Mercedes? Well, the departure of the, of the black Mercedes was inexcusable, irresponsible, and uh, one can hardly uh, believe what happened because this was the, the alternate uh, uh, vehicle in case precisely something like what happened uh, would occur. And uh, she was uh, left alone in a, in a vehicle that, uh, whose uh, tires had blown off because of the explosion that was driving merely on the rims, that was unable to get to the hospital, and that in, in the middle of the, of the, of the road, Amori Road, uh, she has to be um, transferred to a, a vehicle that happened to, to come uh, passing by uh, that belonged to a, a high PP uh, official, Sherry Roman. And that is inexcusable because it was that vehicle, the black Mercedes, that should have been there, that should have been accompanied. And could her. have saved her life. And, and that, I think, is a political responsibility. There was no adequate leadership, uh, not only because of the departure of that vehicle, but uh, there were other faults. But on the other hand, I, uh, we also underlined in the report that the PPP was not a security agency. Uh, theirs was a supplemental support. But there was no box security. There, there was no black Mercedes that should have been where it should be. There, there was not the minimum uh, uh, security that, that uh, should have been provided as a supplemental approach, despite the heroism of the PPP uh, um, militants, that, or the PPP uh, activists and, and party leaders who gave their life uh, surrounding them as, as a as a human, sh- surrounded her as a human shield, particularly in the case of Karachi, but also in, in Rawalpindi. So I, we have to recognize that heroism, but at the same time, point the finger at the lack of leadership and the inexcusable departure of the, of the black Mercedes. You also talk about uh, Rahman Malik describing himself as Benazir Bhutto's national security advisor rather than her physical uh, security advisor. Was that troublesome, you think, and that, did that create problems for her security? Well, that, that was the description that he uh, made to us, but uh, evidently uh, Minister Malik uh, had a many conversations uh, regarding her actual uh, physical security. He was the conduit uh, to talk to the uh, sitting authorities at the time. So uh, evidently, uh, e- even though if he consider uh, himself his national security advisor, his responsibilities uh, uh, went beyond that. But w- an- another thing that was unclear to us was that the, the uh, roles and responsibilities of those around Benazir Bhutto as regards security were not sufficiently transparent and clear, and, uh, and she did not have en- enough of, of a, 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 a support, a major MTS, it was simply not sufficient to, 
to the task uh, that, uh, that, that she, she was facing in terms of security. Sir, you have briefly touched upon the findings of the Scotland Yard and explained that their mandate was very narrow and the information was falsely given by Rawalpindi police. In other words, are you saying that their conclusion was not independent? No, by no means, by no means. But uh, what happened was that since we spent so much time with the Rawalpindi police, we began to find out that they were not telling us uh, all the truth. And uh, we found out that after many, many conversations that we held to them, we held with them. And we realized that some of the uh, uh, information that was unfounded that they had delivered to us at the beginning, they had also delivered to uh, Scotland Yard. So in a sense, Scotland Yard uh, was misled, even though their job uh, was not prejudiced and was extremely serious. Uh, we spent uh, some time in London, on not only looking at the full report, but talking to the actual uh, investigators of Scotland Yard who participated in the, in, in the uh, forensic examination of, of in Rawalpindi. And uh, we were very satisfied that they had done a, a, a very meticulous uh, professional job with, but with perhaps the few, uninformed uh, evidence they, they, that they had available, of course. Now, you have concluded that a proper investigation be conducted because all previous investigations are insufficient and ineffective. Now, at the same time, the very fact that a UN investigation has been called shows the government's inability to investigate intelligence agencies. Knowing that, how do you propose that this that we shall go forward with this? Well, that is up to the Pakistani authorities. Our, our, our duty was to present a dispassionate, a serious, a comprehensive report. Uh, we trust we, we have done that. It is up to the Pakistani authorities now to, to see what measures they're, they're going to take. We, we are evidently aware that a so-called further investigation has been reopened um, after, after uh, 18 months of that the new government had uh, acceded to, to power. And uh, we hope that, uh, the, well, that investigation will be deepened, will be complete, uh, and, and will lead to not only those that perpetrated on a, an operational level beyond those five uh, individuals who were arrested uh, soon after the assassination. So were you given access to any of those five individuals? No, and, and we decided, in fact, uh, not to have access to them because we did not want in any way or fashion um, interfere in, in a, 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 what is a, a criminal case. That, that was uh, an express decision on our part. That was very delicate. Uh, our uh, interviewing them could have been used uh, in, in the trial, so we did not want to, uh, to go to that extent. But it was clear to us that these were the people that had been involved at the operational level, if they had been involved, uh, and, and not what uh, we had to at least put the emphasis on, who is behind the assassination. Not merely the handlers or the boy, the, the 15 and a half year old boy who blew himself up, but uh, those that, uh, that planned this, those that coordinated this, and those that eventually financed and cooperated with the assassination.